Hey, hello there. So, uh, Uncle Hall here with uh, another booze-related video. Haven't posted in a while, but uh, I'd kind of gotten things rolling on the channel, and then, frankly, uh, reality hit a little bit. Uh, family had a, a new addition, so, you know, that was uh, a lot of work for a while. But uh, recently went um, on a trip to uh, the UK, to Scotland, and this video is all about showing you the uh, spoils of war. So uh, here I've got a, uh, a carry-on sized luggage. Um, this is manufactured by the uh, Trip Luggage Company. I bought it over there, roughly uh, 37 pounds. That was half price, so it was a pretty good deal. Um, yeah, anyway, it was kind of the cheapest luggage I could find on spec. It's sort of semi-hard shell. It's a little bit not hard like you know you can kind of press it in a little bit but it's a little bit hard shell so that's good it seems fairly durable it's got one of those TSA locks on it and uh, it's got wheels and stuff so it's in a nice roller bag I don't expect this bag to last very long but for the purposes of one trip or a few trips it's pretty good so let's open it up so I would like to start this video by saying that the contents of this bag were fully declared uh, Canada Customs and Immigration. Alright, so when we open it up we've got a panel on the top and a panel on the bottom. And this bag is uh, completely filled with Scotch whiskey. Okay, so I'm going to open up the top panel here. So when I got to the uh, Customs agent, uh, and actually just before I tell that story, so what I did with the bag was uh, I purchased the bag, uh, I went to the Royal Mail, uh, I was in Edinburgh at the time, laying low because of the, uh, you know, coronavirus, uh, whatnot. Uh, but I went out and purchased this bag, didn't touch any surfaces, you know, wiped my hands with, with uh, hand sanitizer and of course lots of hand washing and sanitary wipes and stuff, so I was very careful. I uh, went to the Royal Mail, picked up some bubble wrap. And uh, so what I did was I, I sort of wrapped everything individually in bubble wrap and I also wrapped it, like I, I put layers of bubble wrap sort of above and below the precious cargo. So if we open up this container, now this bag contains mainly uh, 10 centiliter and 20 centiliter uh, sizes. Now in the UK, for this particular thing, um, they use centiliter typically when denoting the volume of bottle. Now of course there's um, uh, for every 10 milliliters is one centiliter so that's how that conversion runs. So a 10 centiliter bottle is 100 ml, a, uh, 200, or a 20 centiliter bottle is 200 ml. So a 100 ml bottle would actually be permissible to put in carry-on in most I guess most security situations. Okay so most of these are, are small bottles so I'll open this up and I've got a number of little bottles. And I'm just uh, realizing now that uh, I probably should have probably should have uh, prepared some scissors for this particular video. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Stand by. I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back, and uh, so now I got my trusty scissors, so we're going to pop that open. So, got an Ardbeg 10 Mini. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bag and I'm going to put it on the floor as we'll present our trophies on the table here in front of us. Now, when I got to Customs and Immigration, of course, I declared everything, and um, in, in, in volume, I'd written everything down, I'd kept a detailed log of absolutely everything. Uh, principally it's volume, uh, which is what, what the, uh, the federales are usually interested in, but also its value can be important too. Um, although I, I think they typically ask you how much, like volume. So I told them, it's roughly four and a half liters, but uh, it was four and a half liters of, you know, many small things, so that was kind of nice because then you get to sample more of different things and, 
you know, if you didn't particularly like a distillery, you don't have to buy a big bottle, just buy a little one. But you can still be nice. Okay, so I got to the customs officer. I said, uh, yeah, I've got quite a lot of whiskey here. And he's like, well, how much? And before that, I'd, I'd indicated that I had over my limit on the automated system. And it said, go see a cashier. And he said, well, how much? And I said, four and a half liters. And he's like, oh, that's not that bad. So, but anyway, so now we've got a, uh, a Kale Homan, uh, one to, no, this would be a, this is actually a small one, this is a 50 ml uh, Kale Homan, and that's the, uh, I don't know how to pronounce some of these, the Sinag. So we've got the Art Bag, tin, 50 ml, we've got the Kale Homan. Kale Homan is a, a distillery on the, uh, uh, these are mostly Isla distilleries, by the way. So we went two places when we were in Scotland. We went to uh, Campbellton first, and we went to Isla, and then we went uh, central to, to Edinburgh. So most of the whiskeys you'll see here will be either Campbellton whiskeys or, or Isla whiskeys. Okay, so let's open up. We've got a nice long tube of little minis here. This one too. So this video, quite frankly, this video is going to be boring for anyone who likes interesting videos because uh, this is really just me opening my whiskey. Okay, and a lot of these, these minis I actually got in shops in, um, in places along the way. Like the distilleries themselves, is not always the best place to buy whiskey. The, the prices aren't discounted at the distilleries. It's just like wineries, right? They, they don't give you a deal at the winery. It's their best chance to make full pop on a bottle because just like visiting a restaurant for the ambiance or what have you it's uh, you know sometimes there's special things though that you can only get at the distilleries so so I'll look out for that so uh, but a lot of these minis I actually got in stores um, one of the, a few of the minis I got at a, a roadside gas station um, sort of just coming out of the highlands it was a nice spot and um, then other whiskey shops in Edinburgh so we got some Tobermory 10 and I believe Tobermory is actually uh, a distillery owned by the uh, Cadenheads company, Dubber, the W. A. Mitchell company, sorry, but uh, I'll maybe recheck my source on that. Okay, so now we got a long tube here. So I wrap these things as a long tube because it's the way it fits in the bag. And we've got the old Ballantruin repeated malt. So this is interesting because this is a this is a little Speyside malt, but it's uh, peated. Speyside malts aren't typically peated. So Speyside's that, that area of Scotland that's kind of a little farther up north. North of Edinburgh, north of Glasgow. Not the Highlands. Kind of north of that, I guess. Uh, we've got some um, Edredour, or Edredour. You can always correct my pronunciation in the comments below. So we got a little, little 10 year old. So these are all 50 ml or 5 centiliter minis. Okay, next. Now, uh, I do have to say that the contents of this scotch bag are actually um, two people's scotch. So my buddy Dave, who uh, was traveling with me and when we needed to evacuate Europe due to the coronavirus, I, I agreed to take his whiskey and I, I was able to check bags for free with my airline so it, it made sense for me to get another one but uh, yeah oh this one's got uh, dirt on it oh he got it dirty okay so this is a five centiliter bottle of Lefroy 10 and this was actually given to us as rent on our friends of Lefroy plot and I can see that Dave has actually removed the um, bottle from the tube and he has gotten it dirty in the peat of the Lefroy peat box. I'm just going to put that back in the case. At least I assume that's what he was doing. Vern, there's always a, there's always a, an end game with Vern, you know, he's always thinking that guy. Um, yep, another Lefroy 10 rent. I'm just going to leave those particular ones in the case. All right, so, and then, uh, all right, so, got a couple more things in the top compartment of the bag. Um, these were a couple of shipper cases that our friend Duncan gave to us. Thanks, Duncan. So um, th these are really the only two bigger bottles that uh, I shipped home. 
and here's bottle number one. So uh, bottle number one is the Lagavulin Offerman Edition 11 year old. Um, we got to sample this at the distillery and this bottle is for a very special person. So here's to you Bone, that's Bone Scotch. Okay, uh, yeah, so let's cut this up in here. Now, this, now this leg of Ulam, by the way, this is a uh, 70 centiliter or 700 ml bottle. This is often how you can tell like where things come from. Obviously in North America, we're a little more used to the 750. Uh, of course, if you see a bottle that's one liter in size, it came from duty free. But that's often how you can tell something came from Europe. This is the 70 ml size. I'm going to open up this one. And actually, this second large one doesn't have a one big bottle. It's got a few small bottles. But we've got Port Askig, 8 year old. I'm not exactly sure where this comes from. Maybe somebody can put in the comments below where the Port Askig comes from. I think it's maybe a product of Kulila Distillery, but I'm not 100% certain. So I'm thinking this is maybe a Diageo owned thingamabobber, but let me know. I'm sure there's a lot of experts out there that are more than happy to keenly share their knowledge in my comment section. I'm just the uncle, I just bring it to you, okay? All right, we got two medium-sized bottles and another small one, so the Springbank 5 centiliter. Now this is Campbellton whiskey, okay? Not Isla whiskey, Campbellton whiskey. And uh, yeah, if Campbellton Lock was all full of whiskey, I would drink it dry. <laughs> this little five uh, centiliter bottle was given to us on the distillery tour. Springbank is an awesome distillery tour. Um, if you have the means, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. Okay. And our tour guide, Mick. It was Mick, the tour guide at Springbank, and Bethany was taking care of the front desk. Mick was awesome. He's an ex-submariner. He's got a sweet tooth. So if you go on the Springbank tour and you get Mick, maybe have a little package of sweets in your pocket. You never know what extra things Mick will throw your way. Okay, so this is a 20 CL bottle uh, and this is from the Glengyle Distillery of Campbellton. I believe this is maybe Kilcarran whiskey. But this was a bottle that was filled at the Caden Heads Tasting Shop in Campbellton. So they actually have empty bottles. And sometimes they have casks, but in this case they have carboys, like glass carboys, like wine carboys. And that's probably better because the wine carboys can sort of um, stay a little more sealed and uh, hold back the angel share a little bit. But uh, yeah, that was bottled from one of those carboys in uh, Campbellton. How are we doing on our record? Oh, we got lots of time on our record limit. I can ramble and ramble and ramble. Okay, and then the second one in black paper, as you may have guessed, although I could have kept you in suspense, it's also from the Caden Heads Tasting Shop. So, uh, triple distilled PBS, what is this here? Yeah, and this is, I think if the one was Kilcarran, then this is going to be Hazelburn. Um, something like that, bottled for blah 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 so yeah and I got some pictures that I'll post on that so that that's nice that was another 20 centiliter bottle okay so there concludes the top portion now some of these are Vern scotches some of these are my scotches this is bone scotch bone um, yeah and I've got a list somewhere if I can find it hey guys like I don't know I might just have to Hold on to a lot of it. Okay, so I'm into the second compartment here. So we've got uh, whiskey galore. Scotland's Island Distilleries. Excellent, excellent. I'm gonna read this, but I haven't read this book yet. I've been working my way on. I just started the uh, Raw Spirit by Ian Ian Banks. It's a good read. He's the guy that wrote the quote on the wall, or the quote from his book was put on the wall at Bowmore. Uh, this is Dave's shirt, okay? So, yeah, Dave, I brought your shirt back. I'm probably gonna hang out in this shirt in quarantine. Dave, also your socks. I got three pairs of your socks. One, two, three. Okay. All right, uh, yeah, let's see what little tasticles we've got here. Okay, so, um, yeah, next up, 
Next up, next up. I think that little Kilhoman was actually uh, Burns, but I, I can't, or maybe it's mine. I've got it all written down. Hey guys, I've got it all written down. Uh, okay. So, next whiskey. You can kind of tell by the shape of the bottle, eh? This is going to be another one of the Kill Holman series because it's like a it's like a stubby, you know, like Red Stripe or Labatt 50. Oh, yeah, okay. I think the other Sanag, or however you say that, was Burns because I bought, I remember buying a 20 centiliter or 200 ml bottle. I think I bought this in the, uh, the Isla Whiskey Shop in Bullmore. So Kehoman is a is the um, not the newest distillery, but a newer distillery. There's actually a distillery that just opened on the Isle of Isla, and uh, didn't come back with any whiskey because they don't have any yet. Uh, Ardnaho, Ardnaho, and it was the first one we pulled into because we uh, took the ferry to Port Askeg, but uh, uh, Cool Isla was closed. It's closed for uh, renovations or whatnot. Cool Isla is like the biggest distillery on the island, at, at least by volume. Uh, owned by Diageo, but uh, yeah, this Ardnaho was just up the road to Bunahaven, and we were on our way to Bunahaven, and we we're like, oh, that's cool. So, uh, but anyway, that's the newest distillery, but Kilhoman, I think, is the second newest distillery, and uh, they're kind of an interesting story. Kilhoman's a little bit like a, a farm kind of vibe going on, and uh, so they've got like livestock and whatnot, but they also grow a bit of their own barley, and of course, they don't have enough barley to produce all of the whiskey that they want to make, but um, their, their, I believe there was one of their, their single malts, uh, was made from the barley that they, that they have. So, um, you see that a little bit on Isla. Some of them are trying to, to distill. I think Rahadi also has some whiskeys that are made from Isla barley as well. Um, yeah, maybe, um, okay, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this one now. So, after we went to Ardenhoe, we went to Bonahaven. It was late in the day and we missed the, the tour for that day. But when we went back to our, our wonderful accommodation, which overlooked the distillery of Lagavulin, the first thing we mentioned was we want to go back to Bonahaven and do the Warehouse 9 tour. The Warehouse 9 tour was awesome. So, uh, yeah, like, if you only do one distillery tour in your entire life, and I don't know Speyside, and I don't know Highland, I don't know some of those other ones, but on Isla, the Bunahaven Warehouse 9 Tour. Tasty. Okay, and this was, I, you know, all of the whiskeys that we tasted were, were tasty. I think we tasted four, four in, this, in the Warehouse 9 and maybe one back in the tasting room. But this was the one that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I got that COVID cough going on, more whiskey. Um, this was the one that really shone for me. And it's the Bunahaven, so yeah, hand-filled exclusive. Exclusive, it's so exclusive. And hey, you know what, check out the other video on uh, my YouTube channel, uh, the Bunahaven Relax Time. Uh, and also my buddy Vern's uh, site, we both took video of the waves crashing up at the shore of Bunahaven, it's so relaxing because the waves crash up and then they there's these big stones and they pull, they rake the petals back, the, the pebbles back along the shore. It's really nice. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. Now this is the uh, Bunahaven, uh, yeah, cast 12, 40, blah, 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 I don't know what it is, but um, Palo Cortado Expression. It was uh, uh, one that was uh, finished. Uh, in Palo Cortado sherry casks. Really, really delicious, really nice. And Buna Haven's got a real big focus on, on sherry casks. I mean, it's all part of the, the marketing stuff, I'm sure. But, the, you know, I don't know, Buna Haven felt like a really authentic kind of distillery. Um, felt good, good vibe. And really nice scenery, by the way. It's a little off the beaten path. It's probably one of the most remote of the island distilleries as far as you got to drive up a bit of a road. But, it's not that remote, right? Um, yeah, okay, so let's keep going here. Let's keep going, let's keep going. What other treats do we got here? We got treats, yes, we, this is like Christmas. Christmas for big kids. All right. Um, okay, yeah, all right, so we got uh, 
Caden Heads. And this is another uh, bottling by uh, Caden Heads Whiskey Shop. Caden Heads is owned by, um, I think it's the W.A. Mitchell Company, but they're an independent bottler. And they also own Springbank and Glengal Distillery in Campbellton. And I think Tobermory and one other. But they, they we, we did a tasting at, at um, Caden Heads in Campbellton. It was really good. And one of the one of the whiskeys I really liked during that tasting was the, it's spelled Le Deg, but it's kind of like Le Jag, I think is how you say it. So L-E-D-A-I-G. And uh, so 11 year old, um, distilled in 08, aged in bourbon cast, really nice peat expression on that. Like, yeah, it's just nice, it's just nice. Maybe not as, Crazy, crazy is the Buna Haven Palo Cortado, but I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Good memories. And uh, shout out to Callum from the Caden Heads Whiskey Shop in Campbellton. Man, that guy's solid. He moved to Campbellton, and uh, I won't tell you Callum's story. You got to go and uh, meet Callum yourself. It's not my story to tell, but uh, he's an excellent chap. That Callum. And uh, yeah, Campbellton's a very quaint little town. Very quaint little town. Lovely spot. Definitely worthy of you going and spending your tourist dollars there. Okay. All right, this one's a little bit stubborn. Now, this is one that I bought at a, a gas stop. I've had this before, which is why I bought it, because I really enjoy it. This is the Ben Romac organic so a little 20 centiliter bottle um, yeah I like this one uh, it's a good one but it's a space the space side mall kind of lighter in character but really really tasty all right so what else we got so some of these bottles are going to be start getting similar because Vern and I bought some of the same bottles at some of the same places like Hayden Heads has just some shop you know shop expression whiskeys like the Caden Head Space Side, the Caden Head This or whatever, and I think we all, there were five of them at Caden Heads in Edinburgh, and, and Vern bought four of them, and I bought all five, but there's some duplication. Okay, Caden Heads Long Row, 20 centiliters. Uh, this was, this is Dave's actually, I know that for sure, because I'm kind of kicking myself I didn't buy some Long Row. So yeah, this didn't make it actually, uh, the Long Row, you didn't, yeah, this didn't actually make it, I can see the seals broken. I'm gonna have to pour that down the sink. Sorry, Dave. Okay, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, this is interesting. I think this is maybe the only thing that isn't like totally, totally scotch, single malt scotch whiskey. The other thing I, I really wanna say is that we we did taste, uh, you know, a fair number of, of grain whiskeys or blended whiskeys there. And I gotta say that there's a lot of really good grain slash blended slash vatted malts as well. Single malts is not just the only thing, right? Like uh, single malts are good, but uh, there's there's some very 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 worthy um, uh, grain whiskeys as well. So by grain we kind of mean you know whiskey made from um, grain that's not barley, like not malted barley perhaps. Or if it's not just the product of one distillery, like if it's blended, uh, like if it's uh, barley whiskeys that are blended across distilleries, you wouldn't necessarily call that single malt. Okay, this is the uh, Hebridean whiskey liqueur, 25 centiliters, 20% 20, 20 by volume. So Crystal, I got you here. That's for, uh, that's for Crystal. That one won't go missing. Okay, if you know what I'm saying. All right, uh, yeah, here we go. Kind of feel like a friendly giant, eh, with all these small bottles of whiskey. It's like, oh, and uh, Tober Mori sits in his chair there, and Hard Bag just hangs out there, and there's the Tober. And poor Daskig, well, he's okay, he's gonna play the fiddle. Remember that show? So awesome. Okay, and this is a, another bottle of Lafroig 10. Uh, but this is a 35 centiliter bottle. This is Vern's. So Vern is in love with Lafroig. And uh, 
There were some things that went on at the Lefroy uh, plots that uh, we can't really talk about on this channel, but it's interesting because I, I tasted the Lefroy 10 when we were sitting down in their tasting room and I actually thought that it had changed. I recall Lefroy 10 being very smoky and it's almost like when you opened a bottle on the other, from the other side of the room, it automatically smelled like an ashtray and it just doesn't seem to be that way anymore. Now, um, there were, there's varying opinions on that, right? Uh, some people feel that it's never changed and some people feel that it did. And I talked to the chap who runs the tasting bar there and he said to me, you know what, um, there's maybe a difference in the way that it's made in the environment, obviously aging things in, in stainless steel warehouses versus um, you know, cement and wood warehouses near the sea. Lefroy Distillery is of course owned by Suntory now, so it's a little more corporate, but it's still good. It's still really good hooch, right? And um, you know, so yeah, there's there's some differences. So I, I really appreciate what the chap at the tasting bar uh, said to me. Now I, I talked to another Lefroy aficionado. He was uh, there at the uh, at the shop when we were there, and we'd seen these people a few times through our travels, and. Uh, and he said he'd been a faithful Lefroy drinker for years. And I asked him, I said, do you think it's changed? He said, no, not one bit. And uh, he said, I've been drinking it for 35 years. I said, oh yeah, so what, what, what do you usually do when you drink it? Well, he said, well, five years ago I gave up smoking. And, uh, um, you know, and then I even enjoyed it more and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, ah, okay, I, I'm not sure that I trust the feedback from, from he was a really nice fellow, super nice fellow. But uh, had he been a smoker? Um, and had Lefroy been different in the past, he may not know. <laughs> he may not have detected it, but good for him for being a loyal Lefroy drinker. I think we all should be. And I, I would say the Lefroy distillery, even though it's owned by Suntory, I mean, it was a good visit. It was a really good, and all of the distilleries were good visits. They all had special things to offer and uh, no disappointments, except at Ardenhoe, which, Ardenhoe? Ardenhoe, which didn't have whiskey yet, right? That was. <laughs> A bit of a disappointment. They still have booze in their shop, though. They have, I think they're they're owned by um, they're owned by uh, a private uh, bottler, an independent bottler, and um, so they got a bunch of the blends and the, they got some pretty fancy whiskey in their whiskey shop. So if you're on Isla and you you got a bit of a wad to, to blow, I'd go there. So this is the Brujari. Hey, you like the way I say that? Uh, Isla Barley. Um, says Brooklady Isla Barley. We believe that terroir matters. It's a very wine snobby thing to say, but Brooklady seem like very down to earth people. And the reason that I say that is that the day, the very last day we were on Isla, the last full day, we went to tour the Brooklady Distillery, and they were closed. And it was because a longtime distillery manager's name was Duncan passed away. So everybody was at the funeral on, or the end or the wake that day. Memorializing Duncan. So let's just take a second to remember Duncan. I can't remember his last name, but if you go on their website, there's a very touching memorial to him. A few days later, after that, we left Isla. So a couple of the distilleries had stopped their tours. I think Lefroy had stopped their distillery tours and maybe Lagavulin before we hit the island. A few days after we, or a couple days after we left, the island completely locked down. Uh, all the distillery managers got together and say, yeah, no, we're, we're done. So that was good. We got lucky there. We got lucky there. We did We did go to Scotland just before the pandemic was declared. So we didn't, we didn't disregard any travel advisories. All right, these, uh, these are 10 ml bottles, I believe. Yeah, 10 centiliters. And these are from the Whiskey Shop. This is on Victoria Street in Edinburgh. Um, nice little shop. I, I really liked it. You know, nice young chap that worked in here. So We've got uh, five of these expressions from the whiskey shop, and I'm just going to open them up. I tasted a couple of them. I tasted a couple. Open these up. I like these bottles. I'm definitely going to reuse really these bottles, and they just have very, very light, very tasteful see-through labels on them. No fuss, no muss. I like that a lot. So yeah. So 
So like I say, Victoria Street, it's kind of just off the Royal Mile. You kind of just walk down a little. I mean, you guys all have Google Maps. You can find it yourself. So it's a cool street in Edinburgh. That's all you need to know. Victoria Street, it's like grass, grass something, square something, something. Anyway, just, 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 just Google. You figure stuff out for yourself. You guys are all smart. You got here, didn't you? To this YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah, and you know, these are wrapped up pretty tight, so so that's good. Didn't have any issue at all, so that's good. Okay, so they've got the Secret Island. I'll have to go on their website again and remember what that is. The Secret Space Side. The Secret Highland. The Secret Isla. And Lejek. So these are all from distilleries. The secret ones are all from distilleries. They're a single malt, so they're product of one distillery. This isn't a blended thing. Um, but they're not allowed to use the name of the distillery. They're just able to say the secret uh, something. And then there's Lejag. They're, they're able to say Lejag, and I got some Lejag because it's seven years old. But these were the five bottles they had of this type, and uh, I thought, well, let's just go for, for all of them. Okay, now. The rest of these are going to be from the Cadenheads Whiskey Shop. Now, I believe that W.A. Mitchell and Cadenheads is the oldest independent, you know, bottler. There's the peated. And I'll just open, I'll just open enough of these because there were four different expressions. I thought there were five, but there was four. And Dave bought, oh yeah, Dave bought three of them I bought all four because as Dave says I don't want no low-end whiskey the Dave Vern sorry I should be reusing his real name Vern uh, Vern is racist against lowland whiskey it's uh, it's not cool buddy um, we'll be staging an intervention later okay so yep So this is good. Yeah, the, yeah, okay. So we got, these are just going to be extra of these. But what we've got here in this little Caden Heads lineup from the store, similar kind of thing, same bottle. But we got Caden Heads, oh, and these are blended. Okay, yeah, that's good. So the Caden Heads peed it. So um, likely, um, likely a blend of single malt scotch whiskeys, although I'll, I'll, I'll find out. I don't know for sure. Um, but they aren't the product of just one distillery per se, so you can't call it single malt. You have to mark it blended. And we've got the Lowland Spirit. That's going to be in your stocking there, buddy. Burn. That's your Christmas present right there. You racist butter. Okay. Sorry, if there's any Lowland people watching this channel, I just know that this is a safe place, okay? Now, I can see that my recording time is about to run out, so I'm going to let it run out, and then I'm going to re-record a few more minutes of the last uh, comments. So we got 21, 20, 19, 18, 17. And these cameras have like 30-minute record limits. It's garbage, eh? Especially for guys like me. I don't like to be held back, man. I don't like to be... This is the longest video I ever show you. People's attention spans are only two minutes anyway. Four, three, two, one. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So we're back. Uh, I got 29 more minutes to talk to you. Just kidding. We're going to wrap up here. So, yeah, here we got the sherry cask. And you can see that each one of these are, are blended malt scotch whiskey. So it's, it is uh, barley whiskey, uh, but it's not just the product of one distillery. They probably blended uh, barrels from different distilleries together. So we've got the sherry cask finish and the oak cask finish. And uh, yeah, and you can also get them to fill these from the carboy or the cask. And the whiskey shop had actual wooden casks to fill from. Caden Heads uses glass carboys, uh, which is better. I, I doubt it, the, 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 the wooden casks are mainly just for effect. I'm sure it's the same goodness of whiskey. Um, 
but yeah, these were all sort of pre-filled and ready to go, although you can get them to fill from the casks. So, yeah. Uh, so potentially enough to keep me going for a couple of weeks while I'm in quarantine here in my uh, house without my family. I don't know. Um, yeah, but a really good trip. Now, I do have a few more minis. I might show a quick video just to tail end this and show you there's a few more minis downstairs that I carried in my uh, carry-on just to make sure that if this bag got lost I'd have something. Uh, but that's that. Thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging in there this long. I uh, really appreciate your dedication. If you are a Scotch whiskey drinker then you, you obviously have the highest level of dedication. So thanks again. That's it uh, from Uncle Hall uh, for now.